In this Electronics and More video, I'll be showing you an extremely easy way to evaluate the condition of engine coolant. This is especially useful when purchasing a used vehicle or when the age of the coolant is unknown. Even if the coolant looks good, that doesn't necessarily mean it is good. Engine coolant is used to keep the temperature of the engine from getting too hot in the summer and prevent the engine from freezing up in the winter. Most people don't realize that engine coolant plays another extremely important role. Inside engines, you have different types of metals and alloys. As a result, you have a small current which flows between dissimilar metals, known as electrolysis. Over time, electrolysis can eat away at metals, causing internal engine damage. This is very similar to what happens on a boat. Zinc anodes, like you see right over here, are bolted onto rudders and shafts as well as lower units, and the purpose of the zinc anodes is to prevent damage to the boat. Instead of the rudder, lower unit, or shaft being eaten away, the zinc anodes are sacrificed instead. Engine coolant has special additives which prevent electrolysis within the engine which can cause radiators, water pumps, heater cores, and other parts to fail. As coolant ages, these additives become depleted. Now for this test, you're going to need a digital multimeter. We're going to be using a DC voltage range up to 2 volts. And it's also a good idea to wrap some copper wire around the probe, like I did right here, or slide on a piece of copper pipe, crimp it on so it cannot fall off. And by doing that, you're going to increase the surface area of the probe, and that's going to result in a higher accuracy reading. As many of my viewers would know, there are several different types of coolant used in vehicles, made by different manufacturers, and the test I'm about to show you should work fine with all the different types of coolant. In order to perform this test, you're going to have to warm up the engine to normal operating temperature. So the best way to do that, leave the cap off the radiator. You're going to siphon off some of the coolant from the top of the radiator, because when the engine is started up, it's going to want to rise up and overflow. If you have an engine like this, it's not going to be any problem. Just leave the cap off this pressure vessel and you'll be able to perform the test without any issues. It's also very helpful if you have somebody inside the vehicle pressing on the gas pedal to keep the engine right around 1500 to 2000 RPMs while performing this test to prevent the coolant from coming out of the radiator. This engine has already been heated up so what I'm going to do, turn the digital multimeter on. It's going to be on an auto range, DC volts. You're going to take the black probe, the common from the digital multimeter, and you're going to touch it to the battery negative. Right on the post, hold it there. While you're holding that there, you're going to take the positive, right here, the red, and insert it into the coolant. Now if you insert it into the radiator, Make sure you do not touch any part of the radiator, especially if it's metal. If it's plastic, you should be okay. But if it's a metal radiator, do not touch anything with the copper. So let me put this inside here first. Drop it all the way down. Okay. Now I'm going to take this and touch it to the negative on the battery. What you want to see is a voltage that's going to be less than one-third of a volt, or 0.33. If it is, that's good. If you're very close to that, it's considered borderline, I would change the coolant out. And if it's above that, then there's one more thing I want you to check before replacing all the coolant. So let's take a look at this vehicle. It's a brand new vehicle, and see what the reading is. Okay, as you can see, it's 0.165 volts. That's just fine, which indicates the condition of the coolant is very good. If the level was above 0.33, as I mentioned earlier, then you're going to want to rule out poor grounding as being a problem which is causing the voltage to be high. So what you're going to do, you're going to disconnect the negative from your battery, 
I'll point it out right here. You're going to disconnect the clamp from the battery, push it to the side, and then you're going to repeat the test once again. Leave the red probe in the coolant and then touch it only to the clamp or to a clean spot on the block of the engine. When you do that, if the voltage goes lower, that's going to indicate a problem with the grounding system. You have a bad ground somewhere, allowing current to flow through the coolant instead of a wire. But if you notice no change when the cable is disconnected from the battery and the voltage stays exactly the same, which is elevated or high, that's an indication that you're going to have to replace the coolant. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlists as well. Thank you very much for watching.